For many years, members of the Choctaw tribe were heralded as excellent makers of utilitarian baskets. One of them is what we call an elbow basket. It was used to hold utensils and to dry herbs. Choctaw baskets are traditionally made from river cane, which the natives harvested near their settlements. Some of these baskets were accented with cane that was colored in yellow and red, brown and black, using plant and tree roots as their dye. Since the inside of the cane absorbs more dye, making it darker, this part always faced outward on their baskets. Some Choctaw weavers still make their baskets in this traditional fashion. Others have started using reed and commercial dyes to make theirs. These baskets are simple versions of the Choctaw style elbow basket. All four sizes are woven exactly the same, varying only in the size of the reed, the length of the spokes, and the size of the base. These baskets are basic examples of how this basket is woven. Even most beginning weavers with rudimentary weaving skills could complete one of these. Once the basic construction method is understood, you can customize these baskets utilizing different designs. The extra large basket is made with three quarter inch flat reed and measures 15 inches by 16 inches. The large basket is made with 5 8 inch flat reed and measures 13 inches by 14 inches. The medium basket is made with half inch flat reed and measures 11 inches by 12 inches. And the small basket is made with 3 8 inch flat reed and measures 9 inches by 10 inches. In this video, we are going to weave the medium basket. The half inch elbow basket uses half inch reed and the whole process can seem involved. This area of the basket is fundamentally your base. We'll start by making this part, which is the bottom or back, just like any other basket base. That leaves all of your spokes coming out to the side. We'll bring them up and interlace them so that they become the front of the basket. The balance of the spokes will be sticking out here and here. Those create two small baskets that will become the arms extending from the point or the elbow. After that, we'll create a swing handle. It's basically a single piece of reed looped from arm to arm and wrapped. This is the traditional handle used on Choctaw style elbow baskets. Most basket weavers will be familiar with the common weaving terms we'll be using. Those that aren't, might want to watch this video with an experienced weaver to help navigate the weaving terms and the techniques mentioned. You'll need the usual variety of basket weaving tools, including shears, tape measure, various sizes of clips, a spray bottle, towels, possibly spoke weights to help manage the weavers, and of course, a pan of water. I'll show you a spoke management technique which doesn't require the use of spoke weights. As far as materials to make this basket, we'll use half inch flat for the spokes, weavers, and your rims. 3 8 inch flat is used for the rim row. Number three seagrass will be our rim filler, our rim lasher and handle wrap will be made of 3 16 flat oval. And 3 8 inch flat oval is used to make the handle. We'll need to cut 14 spokes 28 inches long using the half inch reed. Before soaking them, determine the smooth and the rough side of the reed. I make an X at the end of the spoke to identify the rough side. This helps you see all of the spokes are laid out correctly as you create your base. It is difficult to determine the rough side after the reed is wet. After identifying the rough side of the reed, let's mark the centers. 
You can limit the marks by marking just one vertical and one horizontal center and then lining up the ends as you lay them out. We'll mark all of the spokes to make it easier for you to see how they line up properly. To do this, take each spoke and hold the rough sides together to find the approximate center and mark it with a pencil. Once marked, they're ready to be soaked. This graphic will help you better visualize the spoke layout. Hopefully, it will help you weave them without constantly measuring the finished base size. For the medium basket, using half inch reed, we will be working within the blue box, which is a six inch square. My graphic is taped to the weaving table and laminated to keep it stabilized and protected from water. You can always use a document protector to do the same thing. After our reed is well soaked, it's time to lay out the base. As I said, I'll show you how to do this without using spoke weights. Let's lay out the horizontal and vertical spokes at the same time. On the graphic, there's an X marking the center of the spokes. This will be the point of the elbow basket. Lay down the first horizontal spoke, lining up the center mark on the spoke with the X on the graphic. I'm gonna slide the mat to the left so that you can better see what is happening. After lining up the center mark on the spoke with the X, do the same with the vertical spoke. Lay it on top of the horizontal spoke, lining up the center marks. The next spoke runs vertically under the horizontal spoke. Make sure you line up the center mark with the blue box. Our next spoke runs horizontally over the first vertical and under the second spoke, keeping the center aligned with the box. Take a look at what's happening. You can see as we work our way to the left in this direction and above in this direction, there's a normal over under weave pattern. Because these spokes are being woven one at a time, you can manage them without the aid of spoke weights. As we keep everything aligned to the blue box, the horizontals will remain longer to the right than to the left. The longer ends of the verticals will be toward you. As we weave, we adjust the spokes to stay within the blue box, keeping the center marks aligned. Place seven spokes horizontally and seven spokes vertically. As we do this, the center mark remains at the lower right-hand corner of the base being created. When all spokes are woven into place, adjust them so they are evenly spaced within the blue box. Then clip the corners to stabilize everything. You can see that the spokes to the right and toward me are longer than the other two sides. That's because the X on the graphic is the center of your weaving. Now we're done using the graphic, so we'll remove it. Here's a frame of reference for what we've done. This part we finished weaving is the backside. There's a couple of ways to do the next step. One way is to bend all the horizontal weavers over, hold them down with a spoke weight, and then weave the vertical weavers through them. I find this a bit awkward and tough on the reed as it slides through the weavers. Here's another way that won't require spoke weights. Just as we laid out the base, we'll weave the vertical and horizontal spokes as we go. Before starting, let's spray down our reed to keep it pliable. Then, rotate the base 45 degrees clockwise so the center of the point faces us. This provides more control over the process. We'll be weaving two spokes at a time. We can still see our pencil marks because we're currently looking at the inside of the basket. For reference, if we flip the base over, you can see the vertical spoke is under the horizontal spoke. 
we want to continue this over under pattern on the front side. So as we begin weaving the front, pick up the first horizontal spoke on the right and bend it over your finger. Don't crush it. Your finger creates a gradual curve. Cross the vertical spoke on the left over the horizontal spoke because on the back side it was under the horizontal spoke. This maintains that over under pattern. We've now created the point of your basket. Take the next vertical spoke and run it under the horizontal spoke and the next horizontal spoke should be placed over the first and under the second vertical spoke. That continues the over under pattern. I'm using a clip to hold things together as we take the next vertical spoke over the first horizontal and under the second. Then I'll move the clip out of the way and take the third horizontal spoke under over under. Watch carefully to maintain a slight even curve to each spoke brought around to the front. Keep the same pattern going all the way to the top of the base using the seven spokes on each side to create an envelope. As you can see, we've created a diamond shaped pocket and completed the elbow part of your basket. Weaving the arms is a simple process. We're just weaving two baskets in a normal fashion. Before we start, let me show you something. The spokes you see are two different lengths. That's because of the bend forming the front of the basket. That bend uses about one to two inches of reed. By cutting the spokes 28 inches long, this should not be a problem. Some designers measure the starting point differently as they take this bend into account. If you're following a pattern, be sure to follow the instructions closely to avoid ending with spokes that are too short. So. Let's weave the arms. We'll start the weaver just like weaving a regular basket. And since these weavers tend to move around a bit, let's put clips on them to hold them steady. As we approach the center of the V, let's change the position of the clip holding the V in place so we can weave past it. Then continue our over under weaving pattern. As we cross the V, we'll need a clip to hold the weaver in place on the weaver we just wove under. We'll also need to change the position of the other clip holding our V together on the other side. For this basket, we'll be weaving five rows. When I get to the end, I usually just cross over two spokes, cut my weaver, and then tuck it behind the spoke, just like we do in normal start-stop weaving. There are four rows left to weave before we get to the rim row. Again, weaving the arm is like weaving a plain, simple basket. If you want to embellish it, especially if you're a beginner, this is a good place to do it. Here's an example where Cherokee wheels were incorporated into the weaving. After finishing five rows of weaving, we'll weave a rim row using 3 8 inch flat reed. Once woven, we'll cut and tuck the spokes in the usual manner. Apply the rim and seagrass of your choice. In this case, we're using half inch flat and number three seagrass. The rim is lashed using 3 16 flat oval. That completes one arm of your basket. Repeat step three for the arm on the right. There are many ways to make a handle for these baskets. The choice is yours. You can just use regular reed, or in this case, flat fiber. Clear filament will help make your handle invisible to hang as an ornament. Here's one where a piece of seagrass was used to make a handle. You can also thread round reed through the basket and create a ring as a handle. Your imagination is the only limit. We're making a wrapped swing handle, the most traditional for these baskets. This handle is actually one long piece of 3 8 inch flat oval reed looped under the rim 
and between the spokes on each arm. It overlaps on one side. Once you decide the size of your handle, multiply the length by two and add about two inches to allow for the overlap. For example, we'll make our handle 19 inches long. Multiply that by two to get 38 inches. Then add two inches for the overlap. That means we'll need a piece of 3 8 inch flat oval reed that's 40 inches long. Next, we'll shave down the end just like we do for a rim. Shave about one to two inches of length. Soak the reed thoroughly. Since you're going to be bending it tightly, you'll want it very flexible. We've changed weaving locations so you can better see how I hold the basket between my knees to make it easier to weave the handle. We'll start by fitting the handle to the basket. Feed the shaved end between the rim and the last row of weaving in the center of the V between the arms. Let's clip it in place while we work on the other side. Now bring the other end over and do the same thing on the other arm, feeding it between the spokes and under the rim. Bring the two ends together where you shaved the reed earlier. You want your overlap to be a few inches above the loop and high enough that it will be under your wrap when you finish. Bring the two pieces together and then go around the handle adding clips as you go. If the handle looks too long, you can shorten it to the length that you like. Once fitted, you're ready to wrap the handle. We'll start on the side opposite our overlap. The loops will be about two inches long, so put a clip at the two inch point above each loop. The clips around the handle make sure it stays tight. Now, measure the distance between the top of the two loops to determine the length of the wrap. This one measures about 15 inches. We'll wrap using 3 16 flat oval reed. It takes about eight inches of reed for every one inch of wrapping. So let's calculate how long our flat oval wrap should be. The handle is 15 inches loop to loop. So multiply eight inches by 15 inches, which equals 120 inches. That means we'll need 10 feet of reed. I add a bit extra just to be safe. You don't want to run out of reed before reaching the other side. Cut your reed and soak it really well. Once sufficiently wet, fold about one inch of the 3 16 reed at a right angle and slide it up between the handle pieces. Then bring it around and start wrapping. Keep it as tight as you can as you go. I recommend you clip it every so often, just in case you let go. You don't want it to unwrap on itself. Here's another place you have options. One way to weave the handle is to leave it in place and wrap around, passing the 10 feet of reed through the V as you go. That seems like a lot of work to me and a lot of stress on the reed. So here is another way. Start the wrap on the opposite side to the overlap. Then unhook the handle from the other arm where the overlap is located and start wrapping the handle from the end that is still attached to the other arm. When we reach the overlap, we will reattach the handle and finish the wrap. At that point, the reed will be short enough that it won't be such an ordeal to bring it through the V. Continue the wrap and I'll meet you at the overlap. Once there, secure your weaving and reattach the handle. Slide it under the rim and then under the shaved area as we did before. Resume wrapping until you get to about the same position above the loop as you started on the other side. How to finish it? There's lots of instructions that have you back up the weaving, slip the reed between the handle, and then retighten everything. Honestly, that never seems to work for me. So here's how I do it. And I hope it remains a secret between us. 
People who know me know I hardly ever use glue on my traditional baskets, but sometimes it is just the best thing to use. Shh, we're going to end this weaver by gluing it in place. Remember, it is our secret. Cut the weaver about one inch or so from the end, add some glue to it, and slip it between where the loops come together. Put a clip on it and let it dry. Once dry the next day, you cut it off flush and no one will ever know you used glue. That is, unless you tell them. And that's it. You've woven a traditional Choctaw-style elbow basket. I've decided I like to use Danish oil to finish my baskets. I even get a little crafty with it. I've experimented with the colors using the natural to lighten the darker walnut and the yellowish golden oak colors. Another benefit is the Danish oil loses its strong oily odor much quicker than regular wood stain, which can linger for days or even weeks. With those basics under your belt, you'll be ready to tackle some more complicated versions. For all you twill buffs, Here's one where the base was done in a twill. This particular basket is called Road to Damascus. The pattern is by Janet Daughtry. I elected to use traditional Choctaw colors I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Here's another one called the Choctaw style elbow basket where the entire basket is twilled. This pattern is by Laura Lee Zanger. Elbow baskets are fun to weave and give you plenty of opportunity to be creative. Suggestions and comments about these video projects are always welcome. I'll try to tackle any question you may have because I learn from them. If you'd like a copy of the pattern and graphics included in this video, send me an email at the address on the screen and I'll be glad to share them with you. Thanks for giving me a few minutes to share this information with you and I look forward to seeing pictures of your projects. These videos are an easy way to share our weaving discoveries with others. Hopefully, your weaving will be as satisfying for you as it is for me.